What's up guys, it's your boy Dream Hoops here and the new NBA regular season has finally arrived. Having the Brooklyn Nets and the Milwaukee Bucks playing the first game and the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Warriors for the second game. And with the new seasons coming, that means it's time for my five bold predictions for the new season. And let me preface this early. I'm going to get probably some of these predictions wrong since it's my bold predictions. And let me say another thing too before I start the video. I did not come up with this idea. There are many other NBA content creators who came up with this idea before me, such as Rusty Buckets, Switch Out, Legend of Winning, and B Souls, to name a few. So, without further ado, let me get right into my five bold predictions for the new upcoming season. So, for my first bold prediction, I must bring some heat for y'all. I believe the Los Angeles Clippers will miss the playoffs this season for a variety of reasons, but I'm going to focus on the main ones. The first of which is that they'll be without Kawhi Leonard for an extended period of time this season. Worse, we have no idea when he might return this season. Also losing two players in Patrick Beverly and Rajon Rondo and replacing them with Eric Bledsoe. Let me repeat that for y'all. Eric Bledsoe. It's hard for me to believe they'll make the playoffs. And just because they beat the Utah Jazz without Kawhi Leonard and took two games from the Phoenix Suns doesn't convince me that they'll be able to make the playoffs in an 82 game season. But I have to admit there are some positives I must bring up such as Reggie Jackson who's going to have a bigger role on the offense who I believe will not be playing as well as he did in the playoffs but if he can give you about 80% of what he did in the playoffs that will be fantastic. Also with Kawhi Leonard out I believe Terrence Mann will have a breakout season next year. Furthermore I expect Serge Ibaka to be in better shape than he was last year. I as well genuinely think Paul George will play at an MVP level this season. J but I've been seeing many takes that because Paul George will be playing at an MVP level, that will be enough for them to make the playoffs. But there have been plenty of times when star players play at an MVP level and fail to make the playoffs. Such as last year when the Golden State Warriors, led by Steph Curry, failed to make the playoffs. However, I do have to recognize those are two different situations. But I just think most of the teams in the West have gotten better, which won't bode well for the Clippers. I still believe the Los Angeles Clippers will make the play-in, but I think that's as far as they'll go this season. Let's move on to the next prediction. And for my second prediction, I have Steph Curry winning MVP this season. Curry arguably just had his best season outside of 2016 and was unable to win MVP merely because of his team terrible record, <clears throat> which wasn't his fault. And oh, by the way, by definition, MVP is given to the best performing player in the regular season. And I've already made the argument that Steph Curry was the best player last year in the regular season. But no, no, let's just get back into the video. And the reason why the Warriors were so bad last season was because they had no real offensive threat other than Steph Curry and many players were dealing with injuries. And yet, I believe that will change with Klay Thompson returning to the NBA at some point during the season after missing two years of basketball, which is still crazy to me. And also James Wiseman is also expected to return for the se season after suffering a torn meniscus. And I as well believe Jordan Poole will have a breakout season next year. And I'm not overreacting to his preseason games. I'm just expecting Jordan Poole to have a great year next year and make a leap. And Draymond Green is still a great player, even though his offensive game has regressed um, he used to shoot 37% from the three-point line that one year in 2016, and he's now like a 27% three-point shooter. He's still one of the best floor generals in the entire league. And with the plethora of players that they added in the offseason and through the draft, the Warriors will try to make one of their final pushes for a championship, and Stephen Curry will undoubtedly be the centerpiece of that team. And if Stephen Curry is able to put up the similar stats that he did last season on still great efficiency and bring this Warriors team to a top three seed, I am very confident that he'll be able to bring in his third MVP. So let's get on to my third prediction. And that is, I have the Minnesota Timberwolves making the playoffs. And the Minnesota Timberwolves have been a lottery team for practically the entire decade, only making the playoffs once in 2018 when Jimmy Butler was on the team. However, the Minnesota Timberwolves have missed the playoffs the last two years, not because they lack talent, 
but because their team is plagued by injuries. Last season, Carl Anthony Towns missed 22 games, D'Angelo Russell missed 30, and Malik Beasley missed 35. Last year, the Los Angeles Lakers with LeBron James and Anthony Davis missing significant amounts of time fell to the seventh seed in the Western Conference. Any good team with three of its best players missing that many games in the regular season is unlikely to make the playoffs. Also, in the two years that Cat and D'Angelo Russell have been together, your two best players only played 25 games together? 25 games? If your two best players are always hampered with injuries and they never get the chance to develop chemistry on the court, you're not going to make any playoffs. But I'm hoping that the Minnesota Timberwolves can stay healthy this season, and if they can, they are going to make the playoffs in my opinion. Also, it often goes unnoticed that they were able to add Patrick Beverly via trade, which will help them tremendously on the defensive end, which the Timberwolves ranked 25th in the NBA last season. And I'd even get to mention Anthony Edwards, who many believe should have won Rookie of the Year last year over LaMelo Ball. He had a great rookie season, and we're expecting him to have a better season than he did his rookie year and avoid a sophomore slump. Oh, slump, excuse me. Finally, I would recommend Carl Anthony Towns, watch Carl Anthony Towns' interview because his mindset is only on winning. He doesn't care about individual stats anymore, like he said. All he cares about is winning and making the playoffs. That's his mindset, and I and I believe he will be the leader of this team and bring them to the playoffs. So next, I've got Michael Porter Jr. making the All-Star team. I know it sounds crazy, but bear with me as I explain why Michael Porter Jr. has a chance of making the All-Star team this year. Michael Porter Jr. has been one of the most promising talents I've seen in a long time. He's 6'10 with a long wingspan and can score from anywhere on the court, including inside the paint, the mid-range, and definitely from the three. I see some similarities with MPJ's game to Kevin Durant. They can just raise over a defender and shoot in his face like there's no contest and you literally can't do anything about it. I'm not saying he'll be Kevin Durant, I'm just saying there are some similarities to their games. And in, his, and in his first year in the NBA, he only averaged 9 points per game. But the following year, he improved in every statistical category, averaging 19 points per game, 7 rebounds, 1 assist on 54% shooting from the field, 44% from 3, and 80% from the free throw line. 44% from the 3-point range? Do you realize how difficult it is to shoot 44% from the 3-point range? The best shooters in the league could barely even shoot 40%. He shot 44% in his second year on six attempts. That's crazy, man. That is, that's, that's crazy. Now, there are some issues I do have with Michael Porter's game. One, for example, is his shot selection, which occasionally makes me scratch my head because he'll shoot some contested shots when he can easily just blow by the guy and attack the basket, which I think that could be an easy fix. Also, he's a bad defender. Like, he is a very bad defender. But those are things he can work on. He has a long wingspan. Those defense, that, that's something that can come over time. And with Jamal Murray set to miss a significant portion of the season, Michael Porter Jr. has an opportunity to establish himself as a Denver Nuggets second option while Murray is out. And I don't see why MBJ couldn't be an all-star. Also, he's going to be playing alongside Nikola Jokic, who's what the best passer, best passing center in the league, probably all time. He's, he's going to make the all-star team, I believe, if he can stay healthy. And for my final bold prediction, I must make one that could actually flop or can actually go really well. And that is the Los Angeles Lakers are not going to make the NBA Finals. Wait, wait, before you click away, please listen to my reasoning and then comment what you think. LeBron James, in my opinion, is the second greatest basketball player of all time. And some might argue he's the greatest basketball player of all time. That's undeniable. But there is another undeniable fact about LeBron James. He is one of the most difficult players to play with in NBA history. Not only because LeBron James is a ball dominant player, most players will have to change their game and tailor it to LeBron James play style. Off the court, when you play with a player like LeBron James, the expectations for the team is always championship or bust. And once the team lose, you will bear the brunt of the blame. You've seen that on the Lakers and you've seen that on Cleveland. This puts a lot of pressure on the supporting cast. And many players have spoken about it in the past. And I'm not saying what LeBron does is bad because it has proven to be effective in winning championships. 
but the issue arises when you add another ball dominant player to the roster in Russell Westbrook. LeBron James and Russell Westbrook in my opinion are the two most difficult players to adjust their play styles to because they both rely on the ball to be effective and are not remarkably good off the ball either. And neither are particularly good shooters. LeBron is more of a streaky shooter, but Russell Westbrook is just not a good shooter at all. He has a career three point percentage of 30%. However, you may argue that LeBron has played with Dwayne Wade and they've won two championships, or that LeBron has played with Kyrie Irving, another player who requires the ball to score, and they even won a championship. And I'd say you're correct, but there's something else you're failing to grasp on those teams, the third star on those super teams. Let's start off with the Miami Heat. Chris Bosh had to play a smaller role and change his game to be more three-point orientated in order to provide enough space for LeBron James and Dwayne Wade to attack the basket. Even in Cleveland, Kevin Love had to adjust his game to become more of a three-point shooter in order to provide space for LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. And if you think the Los Angeles Lakers are going to put Anthony Davis in that Chris Bosh and Kevin, and Kevin Love role, I can almost guarantee you that this super team will fail like no other. Not only because LeBron James will be entering his 19th year in the NBA, but also because his athleticism began to wane last year. And Russell Westbrook would be entering his 14th season in the NBA, and you already could tell his athleticism isn't what it once was, and his mid-range shot isn't what it once was as well. It would also be disrespectful to Anthony Davis, who was a far more talented player than being relegated to being a three-point shooter in order to give LeBron James and Russell Westbrook space. And I've already stated in a previous video that for the Los Angeles Lakers to make the NBA Finals, Anthony Davis must be the best player on the team, but I'm not sure if that will be the case come playoff time. Do I still believe this team will be good in the regular season? Yeah. But once the game is slowed down and played in more of a half-court setting in the playoffs, I'm not sure what offensive schemes the Lakers will employ that will be effective enough to get them to the finals, let alone win it. But who knows? This prediction might flop, all my bold prediction might be wrong, and maybe all might be right. Who knows? We will see come playoff time. But hey guys, hope y'all liked this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Since the NBA season is back, there are going to be more videos like this uh, throughout the season. My after the game is going to come back as well. But make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys like. And comment what you guys think about my predictions. And tell me what your prediction is for this coming season. So your boy Dream Hoops is out. Peace.